Behold, quantum foam, the tiniest and strangest stuff in our universe. In this video, we explore the smallest scale known to mankind, where wormholes and black holes pop into and out of existence, where classical notions of space and time lose all meaning. We unveil how quantum foam nearly breaks the geometry of space-time, and how these frothing, fizzing fluctuations underlie our bizarre reality. Let's start at the smallest scale in our world, the Planck length. Roughly a century ago, German physicist Max Planck used fundamental constants, such as the speed of light, to prove that the shortest unit of measurement in our universe is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 35 meters. To provide you a sense of scale, the observable universe is approximately 10 to the 26 meters. You and I are about 10 orders of magnitude closer in size to the entire observable universe than we are to the Planck length. Feynman's wisdom rings true, there's plenty of room at the bottom. Unbeknownst to most, our world gets far smaller than it does larger. The Planck length marks the boundary where our conventional notions of smooth, continuous space-time break down. It's where, to the best of our knowledge, quantum foam prevails. In 1955, American physicist John Wheeler introduced the concept of quantum foam, describing frothy fluctuations in the fabric of Planck-scale space-time. Here, particles of both matter and antimatter spontaneously emerge and vanish, a process known as the creation and annihilation of virtual particles. More on that in a moment. First, we should clarify that quantum foam doesn't necessarily consist of any smaller components in a traditional sense. It serves as a descriptor for the turbulent nature of space-time itself. Attempting to pinpoint something smaller than quantum foam would be impractical within our current understanding of physics. Before we move on to the next chapter, if you're liking this video, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're loving it, consider contributing on Patreon. Okay, let's cover the most crucial component of quantum foam, the very peculiar virtual particles. They warp space-time with tiny gravitational fields, hence the volatile foam. The term virtual here denotes their elusive nature. They are not directly observable like standard particles. They exist only temporarily, often on the order of Planck time, about 10 to the negative 43 seconds, the shortest meaningful time interval in our universe. Don't let the name hang you up though, albeit fleeting, virtual particles are real, and virtual particles are everywhere. Even if you were to try and remove every single thing from a vacuum, virtual particles would remain. If you have space-time, you have virtual particles. At the Planck scale, virtual particle pairs are continually created and annihilated in turbulent space-time. Governed by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, virtual particles simultaneously contribute to and borrow energy from the vacuum fluctuations of quantum fields that permeate all of space. This borrowing of energy seemingly violates the conservation of energy on a very tiny scale. But with a broader perspective, the net energy of the system remains conserved. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle allows for short-term perturbations that do not violate the overall conservation of energy. As we just noted, a related concept here is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, asserting that it's impossible to simultaneously know both the exact position and momentum of a particle with complete precision. The more accurately we measure one of these properties, the less accurately we can know the other. This inherent uncertainty is a foundational quality of quantum mechanics. The connection between quantum foam and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle lies in the idea that at the Planck scale, space-time's own geometry becomes unpredictable. Zooming into the Planck length, its curvature at any point becomes more and more uncertain until the curvature dominates. Geometries with a radius of curvature close to their size include spheres, cylinders and black holes, so those are the geometries that emerge at the Planck scale. Strangely, at this scale, space actually curves completely back on itself, infinitesimal black holes materialize, and wormholes connect neighboring regions, but the black holes evaporate due to Hawking radiation, and the wormholes prove unstable, collapsing instantly. When virtual particles emerge, they come hand in hand with tiny gravitational fields. Due to the volatile nature of these quantum fluctuations, 
space-time's geometry becomes chaotic. Given that these fluctuations exist in a superposition of various states, we perceive space-time's geometry as also being in a quantum superposition. Simultaneously, many and perhaps all conceivable geometries coexist. On the macroscopic scale, what we observe is the blended outcome of all Planck scale configurations resulting in a conveniently smooth and flat appearance. Matt O'Dowd from PBS Spacetime summarizes it best. We can think of the quantum foam as being due to an intrinsic uncertainty in either the stuff space contains or in the geometry of space-time itself. Before moving on to the evidence for quantum foam, credit is due to all the excellent animations used in this video by PBS Spacetime, Arvin Ash and others. Links to those videos below in the description. Now, since quantum foam is far too small to be detected by our most advanced technology, why do we believe it actually exists? Two compelling reasons stand out. First is the Casimir effect, discovered by Dutch physicist Hendrik Casimir. Imagine placing two flat metal plates extremely close to each other in a vacuum. The plates restrict the wavelengths of virtual particles that can survive between them due to the confined space. Virtual particles with longer wavelengths remain outside the plates and contribute to the vacuum pressure there. Between the plates, however, longer wavelengths are excluded, leading to a higher density of virtual particles with shorter wavelengths. This difference in virtual particle density creates an imbalance in quantum vacuum pressure. The higher pressure of virtual particles outside the plates creates a net force that pushes the plates together. Experiments have confirmed this Casimir effect, providing empirical evidence for the presence of virtual particles and the dynamic nature of the quantum vacuum. A second piece of supporting evidence for quantum foam comes from the measured magnetic strength of electrons. A tiny 0.1% prediction discrepancy was resolved when scientists incorporated the effects of virtual particles arising from quantum vacuum fluctuations. This led to one of the most precise measurements humanity has ever made, accurate to 12 digits. The remarkable agreement between theory and data is considered definitive evidence for the existence of quantum foam. Quick side note before we recap. When we first began researching this topic, we thought the turbulence of the quantum foam was what created fundamental particles, such as electrons and quarks. This is not the case. It's better to think of quantum foam as the volatile landscape where much larger particles like quarks and electrons can be created via transfers of energy between quantum fields. If you'd like us to cover quantum field theory and particle creation in a future video, please leave a comment below. Let's review. In this video, we covered the Planck scale, the shortest distance in our universe. Virtual particles which pop in and out of existence in pairs and briefly borrow energy from quantum fields. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the trade-off in prediction which warps the geometry of Planck scale space-time, and evidence for quantum foam, substantiated by the Casimir effect and the magnetic strength of electrons influenced by virtual particles. In theoretical frameworks like loop quantum gravity and some versions of string theory, quantum foam is envisioned as the dynamic, chaotic foundation at the Planck scale. It's not that specific fields contain quantum foam, rather the idea is that space-time itself undergoes fluctuations and exhibits a foam-like structure due to the inherent uncertainties there. It's about how the fabric of space-time behaves at extremely small scales, where quantum gravitational effects become significant. Due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, quantum foam is what you get when, at the shortest possible distances, geometry itself becomes unpredictable. In the cosmic void, absence isn't emptiness. Devoid of particles, it's a realm roiling with quantum foam. All around us, a hidden ocean stirs, ebbs and flows, waves erratically crashing far below perception's surface. If you enjoy complexity, check out our next video on the edge of chaos.